everyone. Uh, happy to finally start uh, my job. Uh, even so, I've been working uh, uh, online uh, for a bit of time now, but since now we are releasing the squad and I look forward to uh, finally start working with all of you. It's been uh, for Ian Wilkinson and I to settle in for the FA, been welcome and uh, we are so happy, both of us, to be able to, to get this job and going forward. So uh, we are excited to finally start, uh, start with the camp. Thank you very much. <laughs> First of all, I'm still still in, in Norway. I move uh, closer to the camp, uh, over to England. COVID, COVID restrictions and it's kind of hard. We have all the meetings in teams and uh, and get to know all the players, uh, see them in, in uh, games and get to know all the staff. And uh, it's been... Uh, exciting it's been is i know it's a large big great organization so i might get to uh, meet people uh i know it's a big job and uh, i look forward to it and now closer to the camp we are exciting to finally get some days together thank you could we go to joe curry from the bbc please Hi, hey, good to good to meet you finally. Um, just wondering, with this being your your first squad and the fact that you won't have, have worked for uh, with the players before, how much input did you get from the backroom staff, and how much of this squad it is is completely down to you? Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, of course, it's uh, uh, both. I've been leaning on the staff. I've been leaning on the player report. I've seen many games in the league. I've seen many of the, the national team games that are previous. So I feel comfortable. This, this squad is a combination, uh, me and the, the staff around, supporting staff around and the player report. So, yeah. What's your message to the players going to be on day one? What do you want to see from them on this first camp with you? I want them, this is now, it's been almost a year since we all played the game. So they're excited coming in. This is a camp where we have uh, restrictions. So all the meetings, we need to be careful. How often do we uh, connect with each other? So it will be, um, teams meeting, it will be uh, how I want the, the game to proceed, how I want the team to look and prepare them for what's coming. So the players coming in, hopefully relaxed, eager to show that they want to be a part of the squad. And I believe the quality in the squad is amazing. In, your, in the notes that came around with the squad, it said that your job before Serena joins is to help develop a style of play with the team. What is that style that you want them to, to take on whilst you're in charge? Uh, I would say it's small change. It's not the big, uh, there's the job that has been uh, going on for a long time is good. I look the game as an attacking uh, in possession game just add a few things, how we can score goals, how we can create chances, uh, and then look at some of the out of possession work and just a key objective to that. Whenever a squad is named, there's always a lot of talk about who's in the squad, but also who's not in the squad. You've gone for three very young, internationally inexperienced goalkeepers. I think they've got just five caps between them and, and no major tournaments under their belts. Yeah. Is that a sign of things to come? Well, uh, the player report, they play in and out every weekend for the club. So they have games every weekend and that's matter when you're going into an Olympic tournament. Uh, of course, the experience they don't have, but getting a young uh, group coming in, uh, the goalkeeper together, I think they will um, 
less pressure and hopefully enjoyable uh, for them to create that group and make this uh, like they grow in the role that they are giving. Um, Jill Scott is in line to make a 150th cap. She's been in line to make it for a while. She just needs a game. What are the chances of her being able to make it at St George's Park in that match against, against Ireland, Northern Ireland? Uh, that's, that's a major achievement. So, of course, uh, if everything goes like we plan, she will get the cap uh, against Northern Ireland. And just finally for me, that match against Northern Ireland, it comes almost a year after the Lionesses played their last match. It's almost unthinkable to think that they'd go that long with, without a game. What difficulties does it bring taking on a squad that hasn't played a match in so long? Well, they haven't played the national team games, but thankfully the league has been running and it's been quality games every weekend. So I feel like the players are ready to go in and, and to do, uh, I, and also excited to come in to, uh, to be a part of the England team. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Looking forward to meeting you. Me too. Thank you, Joe. Can we stay with the BBC and go to Emma Sanders, please? Thank you. Thanks, Wendy. Hi, Hager. Hope you're okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to ask about Beth Mead and uh, Nikita Paris. Uh, were there any particular reasons as to why they've been left out of this squad? Uh, Nikita Paris, uh, she's in Lyon, in France, and the regulation with the COVID and the uh, quarantine when you go back to France. Uh, they, uh, Lyon didn't want to release her, uh, so that's the reason. She will, of course, be in the squad. For Beth Mead, uh, the player report hasn't been that great. And for me now to kind of narrow the squad uh, makes her out. But as I said, like if, we, if she perform every weekend, then we'll see. Do you think that, that Beth Mead's kind of been affected by the fact that Arsenal have struggled to get games being played at the moment as well? Of course, we haven't seen uh, that many games, uh, most of them postponed, so that's uh, a challenge also. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Emma. If you don't mind, I shall um, return to Per Atley, please. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, just a couple more <laughs> questions, Ege, because uh, you said earlier that you would try to get a hold of Man United manager uh, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer uh, for some advice and learn a bit more about uh, the English culture. So, so I'm just wondering, have, have you done that? And, and if so, which, which advice has he given you? Uh, to be honest, I haven't uh, done that yet. So it's been busy every day with, with the planning the, the camp and get to know people. And so I haven't done that yet, so, but I will. Um, but uh, but have you have you talked to to Phil Neville? Have you have he give you any any advice? I haven't spoken to him uh, either. No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Could we go to Faye Carruthers now for Talk Sport? Hello, Hega. Lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Um, so I just wanted to ask you a, a couple of questions. Did you? actually speak to the players to let them know that they were in the squad? Have you had any conversations with them yet or will that wait until the 18th? I spoke with the players that uh, wasn't, didn't come in uh, in the squad. Uh, and I talked to the leadership group on, on Friday last week, but we didn't speak about the, the squad, the name, just uh, that the squad will be narrowing in. Uh, more competitive and uh, yeah that's it. In terms of Nikita Paris you said she will be part of the squad again um, is, is that possible bearing in mind how much of, of her do you get to watch with her with her Lyon games? Well she plays regularly for Lyon and uh, the best team in the world so I kind of we get the play report of course but I trust her uh, uh, quality uh, and she's a has been and will be uh, a key player. 
there have been um, some concerns about having um, a Norwegian manager coming and Serena Wiegmann, obviously um, Dutch as well. Do, do you think you have to uh, be English to manage, manage England? And what do you say to those who are, who are critical of a foreign manager coming in and, and managing England? Well, uh, I think now the, the, for, for female coaches, the world changed a little bit. Uh, it's more open spot for the female coaches to, to go abroad and coach. And it's more of a culture now that uh, that's the uh, possibility. So I would say this is a great opportunity for female coaches to, to be around and be moving around to be a part of the game more so than before. Uh, so I will say uh, this is a great opportunity and should inspire all of us to, to go, go out and uh, do what we uh, are best of doing. And, and just finally, um, th there's obviously a, an elite um, pathway for, for British coaches, English coaches um, within the FA. How much are you hoping you'll be able to, to help them and, and their progression with your time with the Lionesses? I think all, all the meetings and everything that we have will uh, get good discussion. And then it comes to experience you have, how long you've been coached and, and been coaching. And like you learn uh, by doing. And if you go the, the long way, you have so much more to offer uh, going forward. So, yeah. Thanks very much. Look forward to meeting you properly. Thank you. Thank you, Faye. Could we go to Tom Gary now for the Telegraph? Thank you. Oh, good morning, Hager. Um, very nice to speak to you. Uh, can I just double check? You, you explained Nikita Paris's absence relating to the travel and Leon. Is that the same reason for Tony Duggan, for example, um, not joining the squad with travels to Spain? Or was there a different reason for, for her absence from the squad? Well, uh, we didn't pick her in the squad. So we are happy with the squad that we have now and looking forward to, to get started in the camp, for the camp. Okay, and, and for you personally, obviously, uh, we're all looking forward to seeing how the team get on against Northern Ireland. Um, and I know no decision's been taken yet, but w would you like the head coach job for the Olympic Games as well? Well, uh, the discussion we had is like always... Uh, head coach or in the team and I'm, I'm comfortable that we will settle this after February camp and have a good discussion of that uh, going forward. And just one very last question for me if that's, if that's okay. Uh, how, how much are you looking forward to working with Rianne Wilkinson and, and what's your relationship with her and how well do you know her already? Well, I know Rianne uh, as a player. She played for me in Norway. I picked her uh, picked her up from Canada and to enjoy uh, to to be in my team uh, with her we won the first league title so she's she was impacting our team after that we spoke briefly but uh, I'm very comfortable that she come in and she will be a good uh, assess to the coaching staff Thank you very much. Very, very best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Tom, um, I just want to prioritise a few journalists who I know have got to rush quite soon to Manchester United's press conference. So if I could go to Molly Hudson next, please. And please drop me a message if you're in a, a rush yourself. Thank you, Molly. Hi, Hegger. Hi. Um, I just want to ask you a quick one on um, the Manchester City front three of Ellen White, Chloe Kelly and Lauren Hemp. They've been playing really well for Manchester City. How, how impressed with them have you been? I've been impressed with uh, all of them. I've seen uh, many games, also the national team games uh, previous. So I'm comfortable like seeing the last game with the first goal of Ellen, she scored. That was a great, uh, great goal, great attack. And uh, I think uh, having players from the same team is is good connection to, to the national team as well. Thank you. 
thank you very much. Um, unless there's anyone else who urgently needs to rush off, I will go to Paul Saffer next, please, for UEFA.com. Thank you, Paul. Hi, Hega. Um, I hope the weather in uh, London's making you feel at home. <laughs> um, just a quick question about your opponents, because Northern Ireland, um, obviously they struggled when they played against Norway in qualifying, but then have surprised everyone by getting to the playoffs. What do you think about them as a team and as a first team to test your own England team against? I, um, from what I saw against Norway, they, they struggle against Norway. I think they improved. They are excited to be in the Euros uh, and they will uh, uh, go forward improving their game. It will be a good match for us now. Try to work some attacking uh, style, uh, regain the ball in and out of possession and uh, and uh, so, yeah, it will be a good match uh, for us uh, this game. And about you, obviously, you had your next job already lined up in Norway Youth Coach when you came in. What was it that sort of motivated you to, I suppose, look for this sort of unusual temporary role before your next role? I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear it quite as okay. good. Could you repeat, Paul? Yeah, sure. It's, um, so you've already got your next role lined up. You already had your next role lined up as the Norway youth coach. So what was the motivation between looking for sort of an unusual position where you sort of presumably applied for and took a temporary job before moving on? I mean, obviously it's a great job, but uh, what was your thinking there? Well, this is a great job. And I accepted the U19 uh, job for Norway just up front of this. And... Uh, I said yes to the job and I kind of in the same said that if I get offered the, the England job, will you give me eight months permission to, to do that? And they said yes. So I'm excited. I was excited for uh, both of the jobs. So, yeah. And have something to, after the seven months, uh, go back to. Um, it's very comfortable. Was that important that the Norwegian FA, if you like, said this will be fine and you can uh, miss these qualifiers because maybe for them as well, it's a benefit that you'll get, get this experience before taking the next job? Yeah, in the end, it benefits uh, uh, that team and, uh, and all of us. So, yes. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. Could I go to Rob?